Hey, it's Trey with the Trey Brews channel. Today we have from Northern Brewer, first time using one of their kits. It's their cream ale extract kit, five gallon kit. Um, I feel like I always say I'm excited about the kit that I'm doing, but I really am about this one as well. Um, cream ales are very easy to drink. I think they taste great. And it's also a great beer to give to your friends or family that don't really like craft beer too much. Maybe they just like Coors Light or Budweiser or something like that. They should like a cream ale. So for me personally, this is gonna be one of the first few that I've made that I really think my family will like. So it's hard to give your <laughs> friends or family that like, you know, those typical Budweiser types of beer. You can't give them an IPA and expect them to like it. Maybe a cream ale, you can. So, as I always do, gonna cover what's inside here. We have the grains. Uh, it says cream ale grains. I don't think it says the exact weight of it, um, but quite a bit of grains. This is going to be something different. This is my first time using um, the extract syrup, liquid malt extract. So, that'll be interesting. Six pounds of that. Um, we have an ounce of Cluster Hops by Hop Optimus Rex. It's also different and new to me. And, well, the grain bag as well. And then this doesn't actually come in the kit. You buy this separately, but with an order and brewer, you can get it directly on the product page and everything. I chose the um, 1056 American Ale, the liquid yeast, which is also something new. I've not used liquid yeast before, so two things new and different in this kit. So we'll get started. I've got about three and three quarter gallon, almost four gallons of water heating up back there. And then we'll get going on once that's ready. We're sitting at about a flat 160 degrees in here. So we're gonna go ahead and drop the grain bag in. I'm gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. That's how long we'll let these steep in here. And I will, kind of like I usually do, use my spoon to apply pressure to the uh, grain bag here so that it is, let's see if I can pick this up. Grain bag is floating, but it's not touching the bottom of the kettle so it's not scorching. So I'll let this sit here for 20 minutes. I'll stir it every once in a while, and then we'll come back. We have about 40 seconds left on this 20 minute steep here with these grains. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up as I just did, kind of mix it around, give it some last 30 seconds or so to mix around in here, get as much sugar as we can out of these grains. Then I've got a plate down here to drain them. We'll do that in just a moment. And then over here, you'll see, here's the malt extract. Here's my sink. And I'm putting that in some warm water so that the syrup will kind of uh, thin out a little bit and we'll get it poured into here easily. So just gonna take these grains out, get this up to where it very first starts boiling. And then that's when we'll add in that malt extract. Just at about the point in which the wort is going to start boiling. So I've got my, um, oops, got my liquid malt extract that I'm opening. Oh, I didn't know you had to do that. Um, sorry about that. So we have the malt extract open and you're just gonna mix it in while stirring it. All of the, oof, <laughs> all of the malt extract has been added in. The kettle is really full right now. Um, so actually, I'd probably better grab my firm cap, I think it's called. Okay, so since this is so close to full, I'm definitely gonna want my firm cap today. And basically, 
This breaks the surface tension on the top of the wart here. Because when we add we're, when we add the hops, it's definitely going to kind of bubble up without this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight, nine, ten. So you do um I guess I should have done eight, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, two drops per gallon, and that's going to help break that surface tension at the top of the boil. So we're just going to stir this around a little, get it up to a boil, and then that's when we'll drop in the one ounce of, um, shoot, I forget what hops these are, but one ounce of the hops. Got them in the bag here. We'll do that in just a moment. We're getting right into a rolling boil. So I'm setting the timer for 46 minutes. Give your hops a sniff for good luck. Smells really good. Um, I set that for 46 minutes, so I had a moment to explain. Again, we're dropping these in, um, and then in 45 minutes we'll come back and add something, and I'll explain that at that time. This is gonna all boil together for a total of 60 minutes. So here go in the hops. I'm gonna watch carefully because usually when you add in the hops, it's definitely a time to watch for boil overs. Looks like we're okay with this one right now. It's not too many hops in there to be honest, so it doesn't look like it's gonna to be too big of a reaction. But again, we'll just stay around the pot for a moment, make sure we're all good, and then come back in 45 minutes is what it says now. So. We're about 45 minutes into the boil, so I just set the timer appropriately to about 16 minutes so I can explain this quickly. So this is Irish moss. I get it from great fermentations. And basically, well first of all, if you do a five gallon batch, um, I know this is more about four or three, three and a half gallons, but you use about a teaspoon of this and basically you rehydrate it. You can see that kind of. Looks really nasty. It actually reminds me of the smell of the ocean. But what it does is I always say this, like I should I should look it up, but I don't know the exact science behind it, but it is to help the beer clear up. You know, breweries have really clear beer, so that's what this helps with. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in, and then I'll finish explaining. There we go. Got all that in there. Um, but what it does is you add it in when there's 15 minutes left in the brewing process, or boil, rather, and it kind of, like, attracts all of the um, sediment, whatever you want to call it, that flows throughout the beer when it's fermenting and everything kind of pulls it down to the bottom of the fermenter so you get the clearest beer you can basically. Um, people also use gelatin for this. I've not tried gelatin but I've been trying Irish moss my last few batches so I can't quite say that I've seen what it does yet because I don't think I've actually fully finished the batch using it but we got that added in here so we'll see how it helps the finished product. All right. That is the end of the 60 minute boil. Oh. <laughs> it's not actually that bad. Um, but so there's the end of the 60 minute boil. We're gonna chill this out, get it down to 75 degrees. Take the hops out before I do that. I always forget to say that, but definitely do that. Um, but chill it down to 75 degrees, get our stuff over here sanitized and then we'll get it in the fermenter. Got our star sand that we used, and here's that solution with the hot water, warm water rather, and star sand. Everything over here has already been sanitized, and I think, yeah, there we go. There's my thermometer, I actually just used it. And here's the chilled wort. I'm actually about to drain all this out all of the water and ice because it's actually down to the temperature it needs to be and we're actually going to use this star sand solution pour it into the funnel and 
sanitize the carboy as well. Uh, one thing I just did off camera was I sanitized the yeast, that liquid yeast pouch that I showed at the beginning of the video. Go figure, I of course had to forget something, but that has been sanitized as well. So now we're just sanitizing the carboy. So just swish it around for just about a minute or two, just like this. Okay. We're just under four gallons. Got the wort here. I'm going to go ahead and pour that into the carboy now. back over here. I've got the wart in my chair. I'm going to add a gallon of water to get us to that five gallon mark that we need to get to. Okay, so now that we have five total gallons of wort, with the help of that last gallon we just added, this is how I aerate my wort. With the use of the uh, here, the cushion in here. It just is so easy to move this back and forth. Get a lot of good air in here. That's what the yeast wants. So we'll do this for about a minute or two. And then we'll add the yeast. And then mix it around just a little bit again after that. Just to make sure that the yeast is all moved in. Um, spread out and it's going to get going pretty quickly. Okay, so we've got our liquid yeast here. Again, this was just sanitized. I did pop a tiny little hole that you can see right there. Um, some of these pouches, it's not that it's already been activated. This is how I was described to it. But um, you can kind of expand like it was shown. But they say if that's the case, if that's how you get it, just pop a hole and still, well, this is my first time doing this. There we go, I definitely, to get that um, activator. So just mixing it around a little and we're gonna go, I'm gonna cut this open and then put it into the wart. All right, we've got our liquid yeast pouch. Since it's been sanitized, we can touch it to the rim of the carboy here. Alright, so we've got the yeast added in, and so, put that bone back on here, my dogs are going to start barking. <laughs> Just mixing in this uh, yeast we just added in. I don't know why my dogs don't like it. If you shake hard enough, they bark. Watch. Alright, so here's our last steps here. Um, here's the airlock, and you'll see there's a little hole in there. So we put that into the bung. Now we take our hose and put that into that hole I just showed. Okay, so for some odd reason, I was having a lot of trouble getting that hose on here. I'm almost skeptical of if I even had the right size on there. So, I guess, conveniently, we did have our glass of sanit whoops, sanitizer. I'm going to pour a little in there. And then finish with that three piece airlock. And I guess maybe I'm kind of glad that that hose didn't work out. Because I'm kind of curious of how, um, if this being a six and a half gallon carboy, and we're just doing a five gallon batch. We really shouldn't need any sort of flow off assembly. So 
I think just this airlock would be fine. I guess we're kind of doing an experiment here. That's what homebrewing is all about. So I'm going to push this in, give it a little more shelter, and you can actually see here's my orange gold nail and here's my uh, Oktoberfest. So we've got about 15 gallons of beer brewing right now. So pretty cool to be new and all. Um, so that's the end of, I don't know why this isn't working, I guess I'll just hold it. That's the end of this brewing video. Um, pre-mail sounds really good. We'll be back in about five to six weeks probably with a video uh, giving kind of a beer review. So um, I'll have a little link somewhere around here with that video in about five to six weeks. We'll see you then. Check out my website, treybrews.com, and hit subscribe if you like these types of videos. Thank you.